Hey, what is going on YouTube? Hey, hey, Ron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are in the Henry IV for our first look video. The newest legendary tier French cruiser to come to the game with a pretty spicy payload of guns, a decent agile platform, a complement of torpedoes, a decent health pool, mediocre armor, and abysmal concealment uh, if, you, if you don't have the concealment module. But we are running... Uh, actually steering gears uh, as well as propulsion of course we go over our build and our commander guide at the end of the video but guys if you'll notice on the scoreboard here we actually have a very special guest in this game as you can see our concealment is uh, something you know you you definitely want to keep in mind when you're playing this boat this ship is going to be an agile kiter uh, with a high volume of DPM. Now we are actually, like I said, we are running a mixed DPM slash agile build. We do have steering gears a little bit off market here. And the reason is the French do not have the best propulsion. If you guys have seen me play the St. Louis and the Charles Martel on stream recently, you cannot throttle jockey as well as you, you can in some other boats. That is kind of, you know, the British and the French are not the best, uh, you know, they don't have the best acceleration or propulsion um, you know, from a stop position. The British, once they get going, are, are actually pretty good. But here is actually a good example of the AP. I preferably would have, you know, wanted to shoot the HE. We all know that the French have fantastic HE, but you can see we actually get five pens and one over pen for a nice 10K salvo there. If you can get broadsides, this AP destroys, destroys broadside cruisers. The 240 millimeter guns are just fantastic. Now, something you will notice is that accuracy. Now, this was actually, I think it landed pretty well. Yeah, I mean, a, a kiting, you know, Minotaur at, at that range is, you know, you're, what do you expect? But I've noticed some salvos that did not go the way I wanted them to. Uh, but here we're kind of angled out in this position, and you're going to find yourself in this position a lot. Uh, now, that being said, you can run full agile and, and, and zoom around the map, but we will go over the armor viewer, and you will see why that's probably not a good idea. Uh, on top of that, uh, the slow turret traverse if you run reload. <laughs> As we, we were lining up that Wooster, but shout out to our GK for doing what battleships sh should do to light cruisers uh, <laughs> when they are caught broadside and dev striking uh, that, that uh, Wooster there. But here we realized, okay, we have kited out long enough. You know, we waited to shoot so we could, you know, get the edge of that turn. You don't have the best turning circle. Uh, you don't want to shoot in the middle of a turn. You're going to be detected and giving up broadside there. And guys, this game gets a lot more interesting. You can see our team on the C flank is not really doing their job or they've abandoned that flank. Now, I will say, uh, you know, losing that destroyer early on on that side, you know, is, is pretty, you know, detrimental to our team. So I don't blame those battleships. But here is a good example of the agility and the armor. We do get chunked a few times. Times, we do give up potentially a few risky um, you know angles at certain times and if you guys have I, I don't know if I flashed the screen yet but the sailing Robin is actually on the other team and one of the other ships the Christopher O Colombo uh, I think he said he was running a full secondary build and always a GG's to him Robin is an excellent player one of the best players in Legends and on PC so if you guys haven't seen his channel make sure you check that out here, though, we are in a little bit of a tough position. We have this Awami, the Giuseppe Verde, and the Mino there. On top of that, our team has collapsed at C, so we need to be careful about getting crossed from B and, you know, deep in to see if the team, the enemy team, decides to push that way. Here, uh, we were talking about angling out, so you, you, you will find yourself in these positions a lot in the Henry, either pushing in, you know, trying to angle your armor, and you can, you know, you do have a 30 millimeter belt, which is very beneficial, or, you know, constantly kiting out. Uh, and as we said, we were, you know, 16 kilometers from the nearest ship at that time kiting out, so I decided to push in. Now, it could have paid off in a little bit worse of mistake, but we actually get saved by the edge of this island in this Des Moines making a smart play. Now, we saw that the Giuseppe just shot, the Awami just shot, that was his, his final shot there on the edge of our turn, and we <laughs> just decide to make the edge of this island. Thank goodness for that edge of concealment, or we could have been potentially in a tricky spot. You do not want to show broadside in this ship here. Um, your citadel is pretty massive. Not as big as the St. Louis, but still. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting to... I have yet to be truly yeeted in this thing. Sometimes that French armor 
is, you know, can, can help a lot. But here we get detected, so we pop our engine boost and we throttle forward, you know, juking just a bit. You can kind of tell that we're not as, you know, as fast as some other ships. We go ahead and switch to the AP as we see that that Mino is out there and he has shown us broadside a few times. We just lose target lock or detection on him. I don't know why, but we take the shot anyway. And, you know, it always pays off when you take those shots as we get a beautiful half health with the double Citadel there. Who knows what would have happened if we would have kept the target lock. Honestly, we probably would have missed those Citadels <laughs> with the target lock. But regardless, catching broadside cruisers has got to be one of my you know most favorite things, especially with that re reload booster available. And of course, three of them. Here we take a shot again at that Mino at, at kind of long range. I think my range is capped at 17 or 17 and a half there. And you need to remember to lead these shells. They're not, you know, the fastest velocity. As you can see, we clipped the edge of the Mino there. But we really don't have time to think about it because we came around the island there and we are now detected. And the most dangerous opponent on the enemy team is on our broadside now. As you can see, we're turning away. This would have been a potentially risky turn if Robin, uh, you know, was not focused on the DD. I think the Giuseppe radar, which is why the Kleber was detected. I actually have to give a huge shout out to this Kleber. He played pretty well, staying alive and, and you know, getting the appropriate targets and caps. Uh, the game is pretty much tied. This is, you know, we've got the same number of ships. They have more battleships, we have more cruisers. They have one cap and we have one cap. So the game is pretty much tied, like we just mentioned. It's this point in the game that is very crucial. Uh, a lot of people are like, hey, how do I, you know, increase from 50% or, you know, it's it's focusing on this points in the game. Some games, you know, they're over in five minutes one way or the other. There's nothing you can do in those games. It's games like these that really, you really need to focus in and, and try your best and, and you can actually influence a lot of your stats that way. Here, though, we have three battleships all kind of on our broadside. We are being very careful. Uh, conquerors tend to shoot HE. Uh, if he loads the AP, though, that will be very, very deadly to us. In the meantime, though, we have the Sailing Robin and one of the best secondary battleships at the game, and we are using our torpedoes to see which direction he is going. We know he is going on the inside. He's trying to push that Kleber. I'm not sure if he was, you know, in cooperation with the Giuseppe. The Giuseppe is pushing in. We know that the Giuseppe has a radar. So, you know, they are, they're trying to... If they can eliminate that DD, that is a huge win for them. We get detected here, though. I'm, I'm not sure by what. It could be the Conquer or it could be the DD. It looks like he just laid a smoke screen, but it doesn't matter. We're angling out. We've got our engine boost active, and we've got a majority of our health. There, the Conquer is shooting HE. So just something to keep in mind, right? I'm giving up broadside to this Conquer at a very long range. He has a very, uh, you know, long shell travel time. So, and he's also shooting HE. So it, in this situation, I need my DPM on Robin and on the other, you know, players uh, in the B cap to help, you know, make sure that our team doesn't lose this advantage as our GK goes down to the secondaries as Robin gets his high caliber. So right now we're at a huge disadvantage. Robin put out my fire and if my torpedoes would have had range, we potentially could have had him on a permanent flood as we get lobbed by HE. So that is two salvos of HE. Again, I'm showing broadside. I know this. I was aware of this. Mr. Romal, uh, please tell Mr. Angleman that uh, I, I am aware of <laughs> me giving a broadside. Um, and the reason we're doing that is we need to DPM to help DPM uh, Robin here. Robin has, uh, you know, that, that build can have up to five heals. Uh, it is very semi-resistant to HE, and he is in the B cap, right? So we just need to reset him. We also need to make sure our Des Moines survives, and that GK could have been a little more influential, and that is when the Shima pops up. I'm gonna be honest, he probably could have torped me and I probably would have taken at least one. I have no idea why he starts shooting here. A huge misplay from him. And here is, we were talking about the accuracy earlier. Here is just, okay, three hits, nice, a fire. We pop the reload booster, should be, you know, uh, and just, I guess they're going a touch high, six hits. And of course we're getting incapacitations, but there is just a perfect example of, of you know, I, I just need better grouping. I, I don't, <laughs> I just need better grouping. Another three hits. We're getting, you know, decent DPM on him, but all things considered with 240 millimeter guns and French HE, I just need a little bit more than that. Uh, but anyway, we've got another salvo on him. <laughs> I actually remember being very frustrated at that shot. He turned out and we just missed it. Um, and that's, you know, that's RNG. That's the way it's going to go. But that is one of the downsides of the ship is, 
you're, you're just missing that touch of accuracy. Now, I know some people are going to say, oh, you, it was your aim. Oh, you, you have bad aim. I don't. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I don't. And uh, you don't want to aim waterline on shots like that, especially at ships sailing away from you, especially when you are angled out. But a huge shout out to our Clabert. He helped keep that guy spotted, uh, as well as, you know, taking uh, appropriate shots and actually getting the kill. But here he is, you know, detected for our Conquer. But we don't really have time to think about that. We check back on our Des Moines and our GK over there, just as they get the finishing touch on the Sailing Robin there. So a huge shout out to them. They played very well. Robin is a very dangerous, very good player. So eliminating him while also saving the B-cap was a huge play. And now it is time for my favorite thing to do in this game, DPM. We just got a double fire on that Conqueror. He begins to show us broadside, so we switch to the AP. We get one more HE salvo, and we're pretty lucky with that HE salvo as it sets another double fire. I tend to want to use the AP on this thing probably a little bit more than I should. The HE is is very good. Um, you have a high fire chance, a, you know, decent damage with the, the pen of the 240s. But just using that AP, especially on broadsides, is, is just so much fun. It gets so boring just HE spamming. Uh, but you can see we just maxed our epic reload there, as well as getting our high caliber. So a decent game, you know, a double high caliber for us in the Des Moines as we get the finishing touch on the Conquer there with the AP. And again, uh, I don't know if we talked about it at the beginning of this game, but this is a, a pretty average game. We get a pretty good XP total. We went against amazing competition. But guys, I'm going to be quite honest. I was not super impressed with this ship. This ship can be very good, as can every ship, if you get a YouTuber or somebody with a, a good skill set and put them in it against, you know, moderate competition. Now, we did have some pretty decent competition in this game, but that Shima was definitely a paid actor. Um, and we did have great team support. So Robin's team probably failed him a little bit at the end there uh, as they get the finishing touch on that Awami. So a GG's all around. This ship is fun. Uh, it has great HE. You can absolutely smack the broadsides, but don't be don't be surprised if you get it and you're not overly impressed. Um, we've definitely got a few banger games coming for you guys as we get a beautiful XP total there, 31-17, and a, you know, a huge shout-out to our Des Moines and our Clabert, as, as well as a few of our other teammates, and, of course, Robin on the other team. But uh, let's go ahead and look at the commander. We are running Mr. Andre Lemon here with, what is that, Beyond Range, uh, igniter punch through steer clear and fully packed as well as our inspirations of Membelli and uh, Azure Lane Baltimore for our rudder so a mixed DPM rudder build I know I know this is a slightly agile build don't tell hipper uh, or or the agile enjoyers they will lose their mind I just think you give up too much running fully into one thing for for ships that don't either have the bow uh, or the tankiness to get next to islands and of course the radar uh, but I also don't think that running full DPM or full agility either way is going to benefit this boat, you know, the, the most. Here are our modifications, aiming systems, mod one propulsion, steering, as well as the epic reload mod. Something you do lose is the turret traverse. But let's go and take a look at the stats. The survivability you saw it on screen there is 53,000. Um, decent armor with a 19% torpedo reduction. Artillery, 3x3, three 240s with a 17.5 kilometer range and an 11.1 reload, uh, which you can get down to right under 10, I think, uh, with the Epic mod maxed out. Uh, and, of course, that's without refill station, so I think we could probably get it a little bit lower. The torpedoes, they're just battleship deterrents or rushes there. Uh, decent damage total. Uh, you get three of them only. Uh, I thought it was four, but I guess it's just three. AA defense is good up close, which is not really... Good, I guess. You want the AA that's better at long range. Maneuverability, 36 knot top speed. Of course, you get the engine boost, a large turning circle, and a 5.5 rudder with our, uh, you know, modifications there and our rudder and our uh, commander inspirations. Concealment, 13.6, which is not good uh, without the concealment mod. But uh, let's go and take a look at the armor. It's a little bit better than the other French cruisers. Like I said, I've yet to be truly yeeted, but you've got a 25 millimeter nose there. Make sure you are angled. Uh, this is not a ship you want to bow tank in. It's also not a ship you want to sit broadside in. As you can see, you have an above water citadel. It's not as big as the St. Louis or the Charles Martel, but there's that 30 millimeter belt. Yes, you're going to get overmatched by Georgia, Yamato, Musashi, but I think, I'm pretty sure that's it. Maybe Republic? Uh, no, I don't think so. But any, you know, any, anywho, um, you, if you angle to, to most battleships, except for, you know, those with ultimate overmatch, you will bounce those shells. 
But guys, that is the ship. You can see we got the Pyromania Superior HE and Barrage with the Reload Booster, the Henry IV, a, a decent ship. I'm, I'm not, I don't know. I guess I just wanted Hindenburg so bad. This is a, comes at a slight disappointment. But here is the Reload Booster. You can exchange it for Sonar or Defensive AA. Why you would do that, I have no idea. But uh, yeah, that's the ship, guys. A first look. We have another banger game already uh, in queue. So expect that later in the week. It was over 200,000 with, you know, all the fun medals. So, but uh, that's the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hey, Aaron, out. Peace.